God bless you. My name is Brother Jonathan Kale, and I want to make another video explaining um, this great division that I'm hearing among many um, African American men and African American women. Um, uh, well, I will say that uh, among the African American men, I'm starting to hear it a lot less. And when I say African American men, I mean within the body of Christ. And I'm starting to hear it a lot less because I come against it every time on the man side. But on the woman side, it's still kind of persistent. Um, the way I try to speak when I step into a room is what, what needs to be addressed here? That's the mindset that I have. Um, if I hear if I hear people talking about grace, 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 grace too much, and I just came to that church, um, that's a beautiful thing. I embrace it, and I'm also curious. Even though I embrace it, I'm curious, and I don't do this judgmentally because you can't just come into a room thinking that you got all the answers. But I'm curious. I repeat, to wonder if they preach against sin, to wonder if they preach against um uh, a sinful lifestyle and do they embrace repentance from sin and are they once saved always saved because sometimes that could be a red flag when people preach grace wrongfully there is no such thing as hyper grace there's just preaching against preaching grace wrongfully which is actually speaking against grace because grace gives you the power to overcome sin and hindrances and it's just the favor of God following your life, following you as you move throughout the world. God's grace is with you. Um, and um, that's the favor of God that is upon you because you are a child of God. Um, and so he'll give you grace rather than um, a snake or a rock when you, when you want, you know, something to be blessed with like a gift like bread or an egg or you know what I mean like whatever the, 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 the request is you want that request he requests um, he, 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 he promises grace and, and, and you request a favor and he's going to promise that he's going to give you that whether you request it or not um, if you're a child of God however that doesn't give you an excuse to sin so I, I come into a, a place wondering that, wondering if this is, you know, what's going on, wonder if that's going on, whatever, whatever. Same thing applies, okay, so if, if, if a man of God is coming against women, um, or if a man in general is coming against women, I'm going to speak as an advocate, objectively, to wonder if he, you know, is opposed to women altogether, or is he open to women like you know what I mean how do you feel about women because this world is you know full of women and you know women have been given to man as a good thing as a gift as a helpmate um and the same thing applies to um and 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 as and as companions and as um you know <clears throat> so many so many great um additives to the world I mean, they carry life um, in their womb for nine months. Uh, they, they, you know, it's no need for me to go down the line of the good um, reasons why God created women. They're just amazing, right? Well, it's the same thing also when I see a man, I mean, a woman also come against men. Um, okay, now we all have our respects for why a man should be, you know, um, corrected and, and, and spoken against for all of the uh, responsibilities that he's not uh, leading, living up to. Um, we're made in the image of God. Um, God is, you know, uh, he's the masculine um, side of what we know as gender. Um, and, you know, everything regarding God is... Uh, masculine and men are commanded to love their wives as Christ loved the church um, in all masculinity um, um, loving the femininity in all masculinity 
But with that being said, like, you know, men who don't measure up to that, yes, they will suffer ridicule. Yes, they will suffer, um, you know, harsh derogatory words or even things that are worthy of, you know, um, reproach. Um, and, and, and so with that being said, you know, the question is going to lie with, okay, well, how do you feel about men altogether? You know what I mean? And so what's going on, what I, what I see is a great divide, whether it be, um, race, whether it be gender, um, I mean, religion, like there's always going to be a divide, right? But you have to ask yourself this, is Christ part of this divide? Okay. I repeat, you have to ask yourself, is Christ part of this divide? Because there's always going to be division. But is Christ part of the divide? You have to ask yourself that, okay? Um, because I'm seeing people who are part of an unholy division. I had to rebuke a woman of God not that long ago um, for saying to me, um, I had to rebuke a woman not that long ago for, for telling me, hold on for a second. For a I had to rebuke a, a, a sister in the body of Christ not that long ago because she was bragging about how her she was bragging to me about how her um how how men altogether are not or African American men altogether are not prospering um to the same capacity as African-American women, okay? And she was actually saying that in a boastful tone and in a, um, you know, in a like, uh, in a combative tone. And I'm like, I'm not even combating with you. I agree with you. But what I also started to say was because I was in the spirit and I was, you know, recognizing that this is a, this is a bitter spirit. And um, I started to say, you know, but why are you happy about this? Because man is supposed to be in the image of God and woman is supposed to be in the image of man. So why aren't you praying and interceding for these men who aren't fulfilling their call in life? Like you have nephews, you have, you have a father, you have, you have brothers, you have uncles. And so when you're talking about men, shouldn't you rather, instead of saying it in a competitive, boastful tone, shouldn't you rather be sorrowful about this? And that's part of the problem is that many people are being entertained by what's going on on this division between black versus white and white versus black and, and um, women versus men and men versus women. And they're not... And, and the saints of God are also getting involved in this and nobody's sorrowful about it. We're beginning to become just as divided in our train of thought. And there's no cry, there's no sorrow, there's no compassion. There's, you know, it's just like, yeah, told you so. Yeah, we're better than y'all. Yeah, we're more productive than y'all. Yeah, we're winning and y'all not winning. When you see that, that's the perverted way the perverted way is for the man to not thrive and for the man to not be the head and the leaders and so you should be sorrowful about that therefore come that there from there you'll see more homosexual men you'll see more bitter angry men and more abuse towards women because there's everybody doesn't know how to channel their anger the proper way so you'll see more less sympathy towards women because of the jealousies or you know what I mean and you have to think about these things while you're being competitive instead of being competitive you need to be interceding fasting who's going to fast about these arguments about these divisions about these great divides who's gonna fast who's gonna pray we're not like the world and we have to prove that in our own lifestyle to ourselves otherwise we're gonna start symbolize otherwise we're gonna start um, looking more similar to them because we're embracing 
the world, okay? The lust of the world, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, okay? And um, and it's these, it's you know, um, who's more productive, who's more, who's more successful, who's doing better, and you know what I mean? And it's like that's something that we need to be praying about. We need to be sad, you know what I mean? These are our nephews we're talking about. These are our, you know, and the, and then when you got the black men who are coming against um, African American women talking about they not nothing but this, they not nothing but hoes, they not nothing but um, loud, you know, um, masculine. That's something that we need to be praying about. We need don't we don't need to be excited about that. We need to be sad about that, and we need to be sorrowful for how the devil, you know what I mean, like got into the 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 hearts of many American women. Okay, because these American women. And these American men are the forefronters, as the Lord told me, they are the leaders of fornication to the world. So the whole world is being inspired by what they see in America. And so if we're the leaders, shouldn't we be crying? Where is the cry? Shouldn't we be praying? Shouldn't we be interceding? Shouldn't we be speaking and voicing our tone of voice out against it? Shouldn't we be, you know making this known to the masses that we oppose this as Christians. We're Christians. We oppose this. But instead, what we're doing is we're running to the narrative and we're filling it and we're fueling it. This is sin because we're living lives vicariously through others and we're, and we're not walking out as who Christ called us to walk out as separate people with a separate way of thinking and a separate train of thought and a separate mindset on how we gather, you know, and, and data and collect information and, and know how to discern and rightfully divide with the word of truth. You understand? Like we don't we're we're beginning to become more um molded and shaped into the world in our understanding and our train of thought. So so this is something that needs to be spoken against. I don't know how often people speak against this, but I'm speaking against it because I'm seeing it at an alarming rate. I'm seeing it at an alarming rate. And and you know, uh, the femin the feminist culture is demonic. The what do they call it? the manosphere culture is demonic. Like, yes, women should teach women. Yes, men should teach men. But we should teach men how to live productively. For women, we should teach women how to live productively for men, and we should teach men how to live productively and respectfully towards men and women towards women and towards the world and sinners. You see what I'm saying? And races, teaching our, our the youth among our race the different um, obstacles that we face as a particular race, we need to be teaching them how to handle it Christ like in a Christ like manner. And these are the things that really are troubling seeing um, and hearing. And that and that and that sister in Christ, she had nothing to say. She couldn't respond. She ran from the responses. She had nothing more to say because it's true. You see? And um, everything is a rebuttal. You know, but it's not about fighting. Why are we fighting? Everything's a rebuttal. Everything is a back and forth. But men do this, but women do that. But why aren't you sad about it? Why aren't you interceding about it? Okay. Why are you part of the com competition that the world is a part of? Why are you aligning yourself with the God of this world and talking like the God of this world? These are questions to ask yourself in your own heart, in your own quiet time. Why am I being influenced by the world to look at the world the way the world looks at the world rather than the way Christ looks at the world as lost people who need a savior, as blind people who are going to a ditch, the blind leaders of the blind. Okay, they all fall into a ditch. Okay, so this is something that's very uh, saddening. It's saddening because it's a change of the culture and it's. Um, it's like I said in the videos in times past. It's false prophets, false prophets getting the uh, the platforms of many, okay, getting the the uh, attention on platforms of many to be swayed into things that the scriptures do not teach us, okay.
So the scriptures tell us to pray for one another. Okay. So how many of us are praying for one another? How many of us men are praying for these sluts and whores? Okay. How many of us, um, uh, and how many of us and prostitutes and things in that nature or, or these lesbians or these masculine African-American women, you know what I mean? How many of us are praying for that? That's not the state that God created them to be. So how many of us are praying for that? Okay, so in the, in the men, how many, how many of, I mean women, how many of the women are praying for the deadbeat dads and the, and the, you know, the, um, the, the no good, unemployed, you know, unmotivated, un, uneducated African American men. You see what I'm saying? How many of us are doing this? Okay. This is a problem. This is beginning to be a, become a problem. Also, I'm seeing a great amount of European Americans, a great amount in the body of Christ saying blue lives matter, talking about the police when police are, you know, um, are, are known for killing the African American people. Where's the cry within the European American Christians? Where is the cry? For these African Americans who are being murdered, okay, not giving full vent to you know all this because some of this stuff is brought on themselves. Some people are bringing it on themselves, but nonetheless, where is the cry for the division within African Americans and European Americans? Where is the cry? My brother, my brother Lorenzo had a dream where God said to him that that the the European Americans are going to, or the whites, or whatever you want to call them, are going to, or not going to, but they are, uh, they are trying to stop black people from moving forward. And we've seen this since this country has become established. We've seen it since because this country was never designated for us to be successful. That's why in the 60s the laws changed, and um, you know, and things of that nature. But but nonetheless, it's like, okay, now that doesn't mean things are automatically over and now we're prospering and now everything's better. No, it's still it's still there. Okay. Um, and so even though things are better, it's still there. Okay. Um so it's like, okay, where is the European Americans within the body of Christ? You're not hearing it. You're not hearing John Piper, you're not hearing um Perry Stone, you're not hearing I mean I'm not saying that none of these people are saying it because I'm not listening to them, but I mean, it's not popular. It's not it's not a popular topic. What I'm seeing more so is Europeans, Americans um, ignoring the violence, ignoring it and not and making it a smaller issue and, and trying to become more spiritual as if Jesus didn't call out race, as if Jesus didn't say, you know, um, are the Galileans and those of Siloam. You know, like these are specific people. He's saying, are they not better? You know, he's calling people out. So it's like, why are there no more calling races out? Why are there no more calling tribes and, and nation nationalities out? What what happened to that? Go back to that. Call it out. Stop being politically correct and say, hey, listen, there is a very great, large, popular um um and even if, you know, um, amount of people, you know, getting getting killed and, and it's becoming popular and it's getting out. So it's like, even if it is the media, even if it is media lies, address it. The body of Christ, we have to address these things and we have to put the perspective of Christ on it. We don't ignore it and hope it goes away. Nothing goes away because of ignoring it. And that's a problem among the European Americans. There's a lot of ignoring. And I'm saying this about European Americans in the body of Christ. There's a lot of ignoring because what's so bad is that the Democrats are doing what you're supposed to be doing. The, the Democrats are a great majority of atheists and, um, and agnostics, and they are speaking against racism. And they're doing what the Christian Republican people are supposed to be doing or the Christian um, conservative people are supposed to be doing. They're doing it, and that's bad. That's bad. That's backwards. You see, are you now seeing how backwards the body of Christ is? Okay? We're too busy defending instead of speaking against. Okay? And I'm talking about speaking against ourselves, speaking against our own nationality, speaking against our own race, speaking against our own 
culture, our own group, okay? That's what used to go on in the scriptures, okay? Paul spoke against the Hebrews, okay? You understand? It says women teach the women. Men teach, younger men teach, the, I mean, older men teach the younger. Um, the one, older women teach the younger. Like, speak against these women. Women, speak against these men, men. Otherwise, it's going to continue. And you're going to just, you know, let it flow. And so, this is a problem. This is a problem. When you ignore the police killings, when you ignore the guy just in 2019, he was filmed about to be hung to death, okay? By by a bunch of um by about four or five rednecks, they, rednecks. They they got this guy. They 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 you know they beat him up and they they were trying to hang him. You see what I'm saying? And then I got a Christian brother who said that racism don't exist. I had to cut him off. There are people who you have to actually cut off behind this, okay? And it's not because merely because he's white. It's because you're wrong and you're living a lie. It makes it worse that you're white because you're making me question you. But if you were black, I would cut you off. If you're a black man who says that there is no racism of black people towards white people, I'm going to have to cut you off. We're, we're not going to be able to continue in our fellowship because it's not true. There are many black people who are racist towards white people. Okay? I did not continue to go to my mother's old church. Okay? Called Union Temple. They were racist. I had to leave. I stopped fellowshipping in that church early in my walk. I was like, I couldn't be here. Like, these people are angry. You know, I mean, everybody's upset with the white man. And I understand, but this is, you know, I understand about certain things, but this is Chocolate City. Okay? And when it was really chocolate, in the early, you know what I mean, in the earlier times, okay? Before gentrification tried to stay. So it's like, you're angry, but it's black mayors, it's black council ward members, and it's black, um, mostly police officers. You know what I mean? Gentrification came later. But it's like this bitterness and it's like you have to touch on what's going on within our own communities. How are you going to focus on that when we're killing each other? You see what I'm saying? Perspectives have to be brought forth. Otherwise, you're going to baby these corrupt perspectives and allow the problems to keep going forth. You understand? So if there's tons of black women stripping, you need to be, as a black woman, rebuking tons of black women who are stripping and on only fans pages on instagram and are half naked and are doing the caribbean dances up and down the street naked you need to be coming against that <laughs> if that's what's our culture if that's what's popular you need to be coming against that you don't ignore that if there's a bunch of black people that are men that are coming that are that are that are being known for pimps being known for playing women being known for getting money from prostitutes that are women, you know, and being known for um, um, not caring about um, the, the the responsibility of their children and not um, being productive citizens and, and promoting criminal lifestyles, you need to be, you need to feel that that's shameful and you need to be rebuking that. You don't ignore it and then start talking about the women. That's not how it works. <laughs> and this is a problem. So if y'all not getting this, you are bewitched you understand you are bewitched brother jonathan kale has shared this this is the word of the lord god bless you all in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ